Tablet 5, the Dweller of Unal. The Emerald Tablets of Toth. Oft I dreamed of buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Aeon on Aeon, thou existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night. Mighty in power, ruling the earth born, Lord of the earth in Atlantis' day. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through sun tall, keeper on the way, dwelt in his temple, the master of Unal, light of the earth in Atlantis' day. Master he from a cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men. Uh, that sounds like Ra in uh, the movie Stargate. Uh, Roland Emmerich film, Kurt Russell, James Spader, remember that? That sounds exactly like the Ra character in that. He was, you know. They were in this fucking pyramid a spaceship that was, was, they were aliens, they were in this spaceship that was a pyramid, and they, he incarnated in this, this, you know, kid, and took over his body, and then started setting himself up as a god. It's very interesting, very, lots of little symbology and little things that relate to the Anunnaki and stuff in that movie. If you haven't seen it or watched it in a while, definitely do yourself a favor. You can get it dirt cheap, dude. I saw it, I saw it on Blu-ray the other day at, at uh, uh, I think Target, where it was like five bucks for Blu-ray of, of that movie. That's fucking dirt cheap. Uh, but yeah, definitely watch that. Yeah, it's definitely one to watch. But that's what he's talking about here. He from a cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among, among men. Just so he's just, in, I mean, that, that's very interesting. He's just incarnating in bodies wherever he wants to. And then he's setting up shop and setting himself up as the Messiah and the, the Lord and all this other stuff. That's why we have so similarities between, you know, uh, Quetzalcoatl and Veracacha and Enki and Onaz and, and, you know, all these different deities around the world. That's, that's what it's, you know, this energy incarnating in different bodies for a short period of time of being immortal and, and being able to choose, being conscious of the choice of, of, of where and how you're incarnating. That's another one of the main secrets of the secret societies, the Freemasons, Rosicrucians, etc. That's why the, the rose in, on the rose cross of the Rosicrucians, the rose is the soul, and the uh, cross is the body. And that's what it represents, is the soul being crucified upon the body. That's what the rosy cross is. And... That's what the Freemasons teach. It's immortality through, through being able to be consciously aware of when, where, where, how, how you incarnate and very conscious of who you are, meaning that, you know, once you develop, you're, you know, you're, you're, and you find that in a lot of people. You know, once you develop and you come out of your childhood development, you're, you know, that ego and that, personality is already formed as if it was formed before birth. Not as earthborn, he from beyond us, son of a cycle, advanced beyond men. Know ye, O man, that Hor Horlet, the master, was never one with the children of men. Far in the past time when Atlantis first grew as a power, appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men. Mastering darkness, leading the man's soul upward to the heights that were one with the light. Divided the kingdoms, he, into sections. Well, that's what it talked about in the Lost Book of Enki, wasn't it? They divided it in sections and Gave different ones of the Anunnaki uh, dominion over those domains of the earth. Ten were they ruled by the children of men. Again, same similarity, same things we saw in the uh, Sumerian tablets. It's, it's mind-blowing. Upon another built he a temple, built but not by the children of men. Out of the ether called he its substance, molded and formed by the power of Yotlan into the forms he built with his mind. So he's talking about manifesting 
built this temple that is that he manifested out of the ether and built and constructed with his mind. You know, that's that would shut up a, a lot of these. I mean, they wouldn't even have an Ancient Aliens series if, if if they knew that, would they? I mean, every goddamn episode of Ancient Aliens, you know, I watch that show for for the comedy factor mostly, but um, just to see what they're talking about. But on and on and on they go on that fucking show about, you know, what? You know, David Hatcher Childers, what in the hell built these temples? And they go on and on and on. And here, right here, and they, you know, they talk about this stuff. And I'm glad that they're talking about it. And it's on TV and blah, 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 blah. But again, it's just like everything else that's disinfo or misinfo. It's not what they talk about, it's what they don't talk about. And these guys never seem to, to, to bring into the conversation the idea of the, the power of the spoken word. This goes all the way back to the oldest forms of Kabbalism. Manly P. Hall discusses this in The Secret Teachings of All Ages, the Kabbalistic creation of mankind, the Kabbalistic origins of humanity, the Kabbalistic origins of the universe, and how these words and frequ- you have frequencies when you use them, and when you learn these different chants and these incantations and these different spells, essentially, you can learn how to shape and form the ether and make material matter manifest before your very eyes and create things like temples and, and other things like that. And yet ancient aliens goes on and on and on every week. How did they build these temples? It had to be aliens. Well, great. It had to be aliens, but how were they doing it? Never any talk about frequency. That's what I believe all this stuff, how they built the pyramids, all these temples, it's all frequency. They didn't use all these, you know, Jew slaves and all this shit to build the pyramids. Give me a fucking break. They use ancient magic and ancient spells that manipulate frequencies, manipulate the ether and the material matter. And a high-level magi, most likely a priest who's been trained by one of the gods themselves, and then that trickles down and passed down, and then that's how we had secret societies form. But that's no, no, no doubt. The explanation for for what science and even conspiracy theorists, you know, haven't seemed to be able to wrap their minds around yet. That's you know that 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 to me is the justification of why we're reading this stuff. Why I will continue to read this stuff. That's it, it's unbelievable. Let me read that one more time. Out of the ether, called he its substance. He built a temple not by the children of men. Into he molded and formed the power of Waitolan. I don't even know what that means. I got to look that up. Y T O L A N. What is that? Let's find out. Well, that's interesting. The power of Itolon, it's pronounced Itolon, was revealed to me during a spiritual uh, hypnotherapy regression during which I experienced life in Atlantis. Itolon refers to a sacred energy that allows thoughts to materialize. The fifth emerald tablet. This creative power materializes thoughts for beautiful, elegant living and supplies without depleting the environment. This is the way Atlantis was built. Oh, okay. In 2005, I started feeling dizzy for short spells. I'm reading this off just some website, you guys. The frequency of these lightheaded periods increased so much that I went to see a medical doctor, fearing that I would faint while driving. To my astonishment, I left the doctor's consultation room in a wheelchair, emergency assessment by a cardiologist, and rushed to the hospital where a stint was placed into my heart. Not anticipating a heart problem or emergency heart surgery, and almost leaving the physical plane came as a major shock. Uh, I really don't care about your story. This blah, 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 blah. You're not giving me anything about. So I guess it, it toll on is basically, uh, okay, that's what it is. So it's the creative power that materializes thoughts into beautiful, el- beautiful, elegant living supplies without depleting the environment. Okay, well, that's good enough for me. That's all I need to know. I didn't need to know your whole fucking life story. Thanks. God. Fucking internets, man. Jesus. Just give me the fucking info. I don't want to hear your whole fucking, you know, 
goddamn story tripping on acid and waking up to fucking find the beer who's cocking your ass. I don't, you know, fuck, I, I don't need to know all that. Thanks. So he molded and formed by the power of Etolon. Okay, so that's what he's talking about here. Basically, he, this is exactly what's exactly right. He's talking about bringing things manifest using the spoken word. You know, in the beginning, there was the word. Hello? Christians, you ever fucking maybe give a thought to what that really meant? No, because if you ever give a thought to what that means, that leads to the devil. That leads to the devil. Shock shakes its cock. It leads to the devil's cock. That's what it leads to, motherfucker. Jesus. Out of control. Let's try to continue here. Fucking Satan and rednecks just keep interrupting us all the time. Where did we leave off here? Know ye, O man, the harlot, the master, was never one with the children of men. Out of the ether he called the substance and molded it by the power of Etolon into the forms he built with his mind. Mile upon mile it covered the island. Space upon space it grew in its might. Black yet not black, but dark like the space of time. Deep in its heart the essence of light. Swiftly the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the world of the dweller. Called from the formless into a form. Builded he then within it great chambers. Filled them with forms called forth from the ether. This sounds like, it's funny that he's making this sound like this is, I mean, okay. I read some, um, a news report from the Rockwall Success newspaper where two of these guys had went down into one of the subterranean chambers, I think underneath where the rock wall, uh, the old rock wall courthouse is in downtown rock wall. And there was this report where they, they found these two black marble pillars in, inside of this chamber that shone and shined like something from the Orient, like black granite sparkling. And it's funny. They reference that here, black yet, not black, but, but yet, black by the dark of, of dark of space time. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it seems interesting in these different rooms that he built. Well, that's what the rock wall has found to have been. They found within the, the perimeter of the wall itself, they found room after room of different chambers and temple rooms and all of this stuff, all been covered up. And one of the, the, the pictures I saw of, Quetzalcoatl, uh, supposedly what, what, what Aslan was when Quetzalcoatl created, which was Aslan means Atlantis, was that same exact type of structure. And, of course, Quetzalcoatl and uh, uh, Toth are supposed to be the same person, as well as Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice-born Toth, uh, Hermes Trismegistus, and Quetzalcoatl. Now, again, Quetzalcoatl was a master of two things, crystal working and metallurgy, alchemy. Well, two things have been found that relate to that with a rock wall. Number one, crystals, geopolymer crystals, three different types of crystals that don't exist around this area, brought together and made into a polymer that seals and holds the rocks of the wall together. Number two, a, an alloy wheel, a small alloy wheel that was made of copper, aluminum, tin, four or five different metals. I held it in my hand was embedded into the wall. And uh, I just, with that report, I remember reading that report of him seeing these black pillars. It just kind of, you know, caught my attention there for a minute. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue. But this is talking about, you know, building this. And I just, I don't know why. Flashes as he's talking about building this, this temple using, you know, etherical energy in the ether to great. I don't know why just flashes of rock walls are coming in my head. Like this is connecting, this is connecting, you know, this is connected to this. I always try to follow those, you know, those little flashes when they come to you, you know, cause I mean, believe me, man, I used to ignore them, but now 99% of the time they're right. Um, swiftly, the temple grew into being molded and shaped by the word of the dweller. Called from the formless into a form, builded he then within it great chambers. Filled them with forms called forth from the ether, filled them with wisdom called forth from his mind. 
formless was he within its temple, yet he was formed in the image of men. Dwelling among them, yet not of them, strange and far different was he of the children of men. Chose he then from among the people three who became his gateway. So he chose three people to incarnate into. Choose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. Messengers, they who carried his counsel to the kings of the children of men. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom. Teachers, they to the children of men. Placed he them on the island of Undal to stand as teachers of light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen taught must he be for years five and ten. Only thus could he have understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of men. I, Toth, have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Long in my youth I traveled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain. Until after much striving, one of the three to me brought the light. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller. Called me from the darkness into the light. Brought he me before the dweller deep in the temple before the great fire. There on the great throne beheld I the dweller, clothed with light and flashing with fire. Down I knelt before that great wisdom, feeling the light flowing through me in waves. Sounds like he met the light bringer, doesn't it? <laughs> what else could it be? Heard I then the voice of the dweller, O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loosens its fetters shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye risen. Closer approach the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children, keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instrument through of the light from beyond. Ready by thou made to do what is needed, Preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom. Secrets and mysteries unto thee shall unveil. <coughs> then answered I, the master of cycles, saying, O light that descended to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom, that I might be a teacher of men. Give thou of thy light, that I may be free. Spoke again then to me the master. Age after age shall ye live through your wisdom. I win o'er Atlantis, the ocean's wave roll, holding the light through hidden in darkness, ready to come whenever thou shalt call. I love how it talks about the Atlantis as being something that it was not just exist one time. The way they talk about that and the reference that they they reference that as there being multiple Atlantises. Um, one of our listeners a couple of weeks ago was referencing you know that movie 2012 as being about the fall of Atlantis. You know, a symbolic allegory for the fall of Atlantis, and uh, tend to sort of agree with that. And that very well could be what they're talking about here because well i mean uh you know john d john d uh his whole enochian magic system enochian language system was based on these tablets that's a fact so um <coughs> it very does it does stand very well to reason i mean john d was telling you know uh Francis bacon about america america being the new atlantis all that whole deal but right there, they reference, you know, because this is supposed to be, this stuff that we're reading here is supposed to be after the fall of Atlantis anyway. So he's referencing Atlantis as being this thing where, you know, it's something that periodically is built and then falls and then rebuilt again. And, you know, it starts all over again. <coughs> uh, 
when over Atlantis, the, the Atlantis, the ocean waves roll, holding the light, though hidden in darkness, ready to come whenever thou shalt call. Go thee now and learn greater wisdom. Go thou through light to infinity's all. Long then dwelt I in the temple of the dweller, until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then the path to the star plains. Followed I then the pathway to light. Deep into earth's heart I followed the pathway, learning the secrets below as above, learning the pathway to the halls of Amenti, learning the law that balances the world. To earth's hidden chambers pierced I by my wisdom, deep through the earth's crust into the pathway hidden for ages from the children of men. Unveiled before me ever more wisdom until I reached a new knowledge found that all is part of an all, great and yet greater than all that we know. We had that in the news tonight, didn't we? Searched I infinity's heart through all the ages. Deeper and yet deeper, more mysteries I found. Now, as I look back through the ages, know I that wisdom is boundless, ever grown greater throughout the ages, one with infinities greater than all. Light there was in ancient Atlantis, yet darkness too was hidden in all. Fell from the light into the darkness, some who had risen to heights among men. Proud they became because of their knowledge. Proud were they of their place among men. Deep delved they into the forbidden and opened the gateway that led to below. Sought they to gain ever more knowledge, but seeking to bring it up from below. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light. Opened they then by their knowledge pathways forbidden to man. Built in his temple, all seeing the dweller lay in his aguante, while through Atlantis his soul roamed free. Saw he the Atlanteans by their magic, opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. There is, there we are talking about opening this gateway, opening up a portal. Fast fled his soul then back to his body. Up he arose from his aguante. Called he the three mighty messengers. Gave the commands that shattered the world. Deep neath earth's crust to the halls of Amenti swiftly descended the dweller. Called he then on the powers of the seven lords, wielded, and changed the earth's balance. Sounds like a pole shift. Down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves, shattered the gateway that had been opened, shattered the doorway that led down below. All of the islands were shattered except Unal, and part of the island of the sons of the dweller. Preserved he them to be the teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of men. Called he then I Toth before him, gave me commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou, O Toth, all of your wisdom. Take all of your records. Take all of your magic. Go thou forth as a teacher of men. Go thou forth reserving the records until in time light grows among men. Light shall thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men. Over all earth give we ye power. Free thou to give it or to take it away. Gather thou now the sons of Atlantis. Take them and flee to the people of the rock caves. Fly to the land of the children of Kim. Then gathered I the sons of Atlantis. Into the spaceship I brought all my records. I brought the records of sunken Atlantis. Gathered I all of my powers and instruments, many of mighty magic. Up then we rose on wings of the morning. High we arose above the temple, leaving behind the three and dweller deep in the halls neath the temple, closing the pathway to the lords of the cycles. 
Yet ever to him who has knowing, open shall be the path to Amenti. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Cam. There by my power I conquered and ruled them. Raised I to light the children of Cam, deep neath their rocks I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion yet unto a man. There neath the image rests yet my spaceship, for to be brought when the need shall arise. So, so his spaceship is underneath the, the Sphinx. Well, that's great. I'm glad we know that now. Know ye, O man, that far in the future invaders shall come from out of the deep. Oh, really? Far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake, ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. We will do that, sir. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek, and the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in a wall. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in a passage that ends in a wall. That's, that's that video I was telling you about. Seek, and, seek it, and the doorway of life shall be thine. That was that video I told you guys about last week. Um... Let me find that again. Yeah, Great Pyramid, a strange sacred door at the top half in the Queen's Chamber. Uh, that's and I, I saw that referenced last week in some of the tablets um, that we were reading from. But and I'm going to drop it in the chat room again for you. There, it's that green video. You have to watch it. That's, that's exactly what he's talking about there. Let me read that for you again. Know ye, O man, that far in the future invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek and the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in a wall. That In that video, you will see that that's the passageway that ends in a wall. And they sent a robot in there with a camera. And you can see it. It's a star chart. That's what he's talking about here. It's there. And we're just ignoring it? I want to figure this out. I want to make all this happen. How do we do that? Anybody got any ideas? Use thou the key of the seven, and open to thee the pathway will fall. Now unto thee I have given my wisdom. Now unto thee I have given my way. Follow the pathway. Solve thou my secrets. Unto thee I have shown the way. So that's the, the end of tablet number five. We'll pick up next time on the broadcast with tablet number six, the key of magic. The key of magic. That should make for pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. Wow. Uh, call. I mean, this this one was amazing in and of itself. Calling up material things into being by using frequencies and, uh, you know, spaceships under the Sphinx and in that hidden chamber. Wow. I mean, this stuff just staring us in the face, folks. And yet, you know. Um, Many of our brothers and sisters out there are too distracted by, you know, this fucking corporatized hot topic mall version of revolution. And 
Meanwhile, the keys to the info that we seek are, are just sitting here right in front of us, and we just ignore them and worry about the bankers and worry about, you know, whether or not we're, we're going to be able to stay fat Americans and buy that new iPad next year. That's what this whole thing's about. These people don't give two shits about information or the real world or the power structure. They just want their people in it. I don't know, man. I just, I see the whole Fabian socialist, Marxist, communist takeover that they tried to tell us was a control system being the main tenant that's been brought in by this priest class. And, you know, we've gotten it in, in, in the biggest way it's ever been brought to America, but you can't say that or you're racist. You need to wake up. 